Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn about something called matter. And before we start talking about matter, we should probably start talking about chemistry. And what is chemistry? Well, it says right here that chemistry is the study of matter and the change or the changes it undergoes. So in chemistry, we're looking at matter. We're looking at different substances and how they interact or react with other substances. And when we're talking about chemistry, there's all kinds of different branches of chemistry. For example, there's inorganic chemistry, which is the chemistry that you'll typically learn about in a first year chemistry course. There's organic chemistry, which is the chemistry of carbon containing compounds. There's analytical chemistry where you're taking a look at and analyzing the components of different substances and what's making them up. There's nuclear chemistry where you're looking primarily at the nucleus of different atoms and the changes that they undergo in radioactive particles over time. There's biochemistry, that is the chemistry of life. You're looking at uh, chemical processes and reactions within the, uh, the human body, for example. There's green chemistry, which is a new type of chemistry, a relatively new type of chemistry, and uh, a very uh, quickly expanding uh, branch of chemistry. You're looking at basically uh, chemistry of the environment and how to make uh, the world maybe a, a cleaner and, and better place for us all. There's electrochemistry right here. There's astrochemistry. There's chemical engineering. There's medicinal chemistry. For example, pharmaceutical companies uh, will primarily hire uh, people that have degrees in chemistry to, to manufacture their, uh, their pharmaceuticals. And last but not least, there's physical chemistry. All right, so chemistry is a broad range or has a very broad range of different uh, uh, branches. But understand that chemistry in general is the study of matter and the changes that it undergoes. And that's what we're taking a look at this year. But let's first start off by talking about matter and what is matter. So what is matter? Well, it says right here that matter is anything that has mass and volume. So anything that has mass and takes up space is going to be considered matter. And if we think about the things around us and in our environment, uh, we can pretty much think, uh, well, everything that we think of pretty much for the most part is made up of uh, or is matter. For example, the air around us, though we can't see it, we're breathing it in. We're breathing in microscopic particles of nitrogen and oxygen and uh, water vapor and hydrogen gas. And we're breathing those particles or those atoms or compounds into our lungs. And even though we can't see it, uh, if we breathe out into a balloon, that balloon is going to take up more and more space as we breathe out. So therefore, it has a volume. And if you put that balloon that you expelled all the air that was in your lungs into on a scale, it would definitely have a very uh, small mass. Uh, even though it is small, it would definitely have a mass. So air is considered matter. Tiny little particles or atoms uh, are also uh, considered matter. If we break an atom up, to the uh, subatomic particles that make them up. We'll have neutrons, we'll have electrons, and we'll have protons, which are even smaller particles, but they do have a mass, and they do have a very, 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 very small volume. All right, so more examples, oxygen, gas, salt, uh, water, all these things here are different molecules that we're gonna talk about this year, compounds and elements, all these guys are considered matter. And so there's really not too many things that you can think of that aren't considered matter. Even in physics, if you, if you think about energy or if you say, hey, energy is not considered matter, well, in physics, they might disagree with you because uh, in physics, uh, energy is nothing more than a, a, a condensation of huge amounts of, uh, of mass. I'm sorry, mass is nothing more than a condensation of huge amounts of energy. So energy and mass are basically one and the same thing. But that's, uh, that's a later discussion that we'll talk about. All right, so let's first talk a little bit about the history of matter and uh, basically talk about what the early, we'll start off talking about what the early or ancient Greek philosophers and thinkers had to say about matter, and we'll build from there. All right, so we'll start talking about the four classical elements of matter. And our discussion here is going to begin with uh, a gentleman or a Greek thinker and philosopher named Empedocles that lived about 500 or so BC. All right, and he basically started thinking, hmm, I wonder what all this stuff around us is made up of. What is all this matter around us made up of? And he comes up with this idea that all matter is made up of 
four uh, classical uh, elements, or four basic elements, and we call them the classical elements of matter. So about 2,500 years ago, this guy right here comes up with this idea that all matter is made up of air, water, fire, and earth. Okay, so this was uh, this was a crazy idea. This is a, a, a you know an, a very new idea for the time, and this is how it kind of stood for uh, for many many years until another guy comes along by the name of Democritus, and uh, let's see what he has to say. So 30 or 40 years or so go by, and then there's this guy right here by the name of Democritus. Democritus was another Greek thinker uh, about 2,500 years ago. And he's sitting there thinking one day, hmm, I wonder what all this stuff is made up of. And he comes up with this idea that all matter is made up of tiny particles that he called atoms. Okay, So Democritus is the first person to come up with the idea of atoms, that all matter is made up of tiny little particles called atoms. And then he goes on to describe these tiny little particles, even though 2,500 years ago there weren't any microscopes or any way of really seeing those small particles that he's He's, uh, he's, you know, basically theorizing all matter is made up of. So he goes on to say that uh, all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. And he goes on to say that these atoms are indivisible, that they're indivisible, that they're solid and indestructible little spheres of matter. And uh, he goes on further to say that atoms have always been and will always be in motion. And between atoms, there's empty space. He says this about these tiny little particles. And then he says there are an infinite number of atoms and kinds of atoms which differ in shape and size. Okay, so some of this stuff that Democritus is talking about 2,500 years ago is absolutely true today. Today we know that all matter is made up of these tiny little particles called atoms. Uh, however, we know that they're not indivisible. They're not indestructible. Uh, they are in motion, sure, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, not a bad little uh, hypothesis for Democritus 2,500 years ago, given the technology that he, that he had at that time. Okay, so there's Democritus. Understand the ideas that he had uh, come up and contributed to, to chemistry. And now let's talk a little bit about atoms and elements and compounds. And so if we start with the smallest uh, and basic building blocks of all matter, we're going to have something called an atom. And so what we have right here is just an example of a sodium atom, right? Here's a sodium atom right here. It's got 11 protons in its nucleus. It's got uh, 12 neutrons in its uh, nucleus, and it has 11 electrons outside of its nucleus. Okay, so there are about 115 or so different types of atoms in the known universe. There's hydrogen atoms. There's helium atoms. There's nitrogen and carbon and uh, oxygen atoms. There's gold atoms. And so you can find all the different types of atoms on the periodic table of elements. There's about 115 of them uh, currently. All right, and these are the basic building blocks of all matter. It says right here that atoms are also the smallest unit of ordinary matter that has the properties of a chemical element. And also we know about atoms now is that these atoms here are made up of even tinier subatomic particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. So atoms are the basic building blocks of all matter. And if you get a bunch of the same type of atom together, for example, if you get a bunch of the same uh, uh, sodium atom together, you will end up with an element, the element we know as sodium. Okay, so elements uh, are, are nothing more than a collection of huge amounts of the same type of atom. Okay, and so if you look on the periodic table of elements, there's about 115 uh, known elements. 90 of them are naturally occurring and 25 of them are man-made or they're synthesized in labs. Okay, And so all of these guys here, all the different known elements can be found on the periodic table of, uh, of elements. So let's think about this here. To give you guys an example here, there's about 26 letters in the alphabet. Now that doesn't mean that there's only 26 words in the English language. There are tens of thousands, if not a hundred thousand uh, different words in the English language. So how does that work? Well, those letters of the alphabet, those 26 letters of the alphabet, they rearrange uh, themselves to form these different words. Well, guess what happens, people? The 115 elements on the periodic table, they're going to rearrange themselves in different patterns and different structures to form what we call compounds. So what is a compound? Well, a compound 
uh, it says right here, are two or more different elements bonded together. So much like the 26 letters of the alphabet bond or, uh, or rearrange themselves and bond to form the different words, these elements will rearrange themselves and bond to one another to form compounds. For example, when you take a sodium atom here and bond it with a chlorine atom here, you will have this substance called sodium chloride or, uh, or table salt, basically. So it's an important concept to understand uh, that compounds are two or more different elements bonded together and that compounds have totally different physical and chemical properties than the elements that make them up. And we'll take a look at what that means. So there are only about 115 elements and those elements combine in different arrangements to form millions of different compounds. So if we look around the world, if you look around your environment, you'll notice that most substances in this world are, are compounds, in fact. Okay, so let's take a closer look at compounds and see how they work. All right, so let's talk a little bit about compounds. It says right here, once again, and this is a very important concept to understand, that the physical and chemical properties of a compound are going to be different than the elements that make that, them up. So what does that mean? Well, if we take some sodium, which is a soft, shiny metal that is highly reactive in water, and we mix that together with chlorine, which is a toxic green gas. So we have two different elements here. We have sodium, which is number 11 on the periodic table of elements, and we have chlorine, which is number 17 uh, on the periodic table of elements. And these are two different elements, right? This is a soft, shiny metal, which is highly reactive in water, and this is chlorine, which is a toxic green gas. If you breathe it in, it will do some severe damage, if not kill you. But for some weird reason, when you mix these two things together, you end up with a compound we call sodium chloride. Sodium is now bonded to chlorine. And uh, what ends up happening is that table salt is formed. And in fact, table salt is essential for human life. We cannot live without it. So quite a, uh, uh, an interesting thing to, uh, to, to think about that, hey, uh, the stuff that we're putting on our popcorn at the movie theater is nothing more than this soft, shiny metal mixed with this green toxic uh, gas and when you mix these two guys together, you will end up with this white uh, crystal structure that is essential for human life. Okay, So understand the concept that a compound, that being the sodium chloride right here, this table salt, is going to have way different physical and chemical properties than the two elements that make them up, than the sodium uh, metal here and the chlorine gas right here. Okay, so that is matter in a nutshell. Uh, that is what we're going to be learning about in chemistry and understand the idea of atoms versus elements and compounds and understand a little bit about the history of the development of, of matter uh, from the four classical elements of matter to Democritus's uh, formulation of atomic theory. And if you like what you see, go ahead and click the little bomb in the bottom right hand corner here and that will subscribe you to my channel. So that was atoms, elements, and compounds and matter in a nutshell and I hope you found this helpful.